Hello everyone, my name is Jean Valdispul. I'm an associate professor of computer science at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. I will speak today of my experience with Pilo and then Ball and Science at gamifying comparative genomics. So I'm working by informatics and what we're doing is designing game that would help geneticists of make a better uh, analysis of, uh, of genomes and DNA sequences. And the first lesson we learned here was that when you're doing this, you really want to apply your problem, your techniques to something that is of broad appeal for the scientist and the gamer at the same time. So it's very important to choose carefully your problem. In all case, we look at the problem called the multiple sequence alignment problem. That is a key problem in the field of bioinformatics. Uh, it's one of the techniques that is used in many papers. Uh, algorithm they've been developed for citing it among the most pap cited paper in the world. So it, it really suggests that it's something that is very important for the scientific community. Uh, and at the same time, it would be very easy to, to sell that to the player to justify the involvement in something that is important for the, uh, the community at large. Once you, you choose your problem, you have to understand how to solve it efficiently and make the best use possible of your game. What does that mean here? It means that if you develop a game and try to engage people at solving it, you have to make sure that the contribution will be valuable and try to understand to make the, the, best, um, the best use of the skills of human at helping you solving the problem. In the case uh, of the problem trying to solve, typically what's happening is that computer uh, make an alignment first, and then after you have interfaces used by scientists to correct the potential mistakes. And these interfaces look something like this. When you see that the, the nucleotide, the ACGT, uh, color to make the task much more visual. Visual. And why do we doing this? It's because it's much easier for the human brain to process the color, and at the same time we tap into the visual pattern recognition of the human. And uh, this was uh, an observation that we leveraged when we built the game Philo that was launched in 2010. So Philo tried to take this task and try to remove everything that was not necessary and keep everything um, that, uh, that is used by the human brain to process the data. In particular here, we removed the ACGT and just kept the tiles. In the end, what we have is a casual tile matching games where the, the players are very naturally just moving the, the tiles left and right, try to organize the data in such a way that uh, it will look better and hopefully would result for us in better alignment. So what was also important in for Philo here is uh, we want to engage as many people as possible. So one of the interesting aspects of the game is like it was a game that you can play with a minimal training and so again it was open to everyone. It doesn't require registration or doesn't require everything. You can go to the website and play there. But one caveat that, that we have here too is that like any scientific game uh, that are published on the, uh, a web page uh, as we did, it still re uh, target a specific a community of player that is relatively uh, narrow. And hopefully if you want to try the massive analysis, we need also to, to go where the gamer are and try to, to reach them as possible. And what we try to, to do there, to try to challenge even more the approach, to make it more uh, accessible by the, by the large audience, was to try to integrate this final game into something that seemed completely unlikely here, that in the first shooter game like Borderlands 3 that is developed by Gearbox here. So we work with Gearbox to try to make it the game even better and even more uh, fun and entertaining so that even someone that is not really uh, interested primarily by science will be able to play and will enjoy it. To do that, we try to have the best immersion possible, to try to put that in the, the game into a universe that will work. So typically, Borderland Science now, uh, as we call it, is accessible through a cabinet into the Borderland 3 universe. So it's really something that is fully integrated and uh, naturally you have a feel to, to engage the game because it feels like something that is unusual. And once you access the game for the cabinet, this is what you see. And uh, you see from right away here that the presentation game is completely different. Instead of playing horizontally, we play vertically and this makes the game much more intuitive. Uh, we also simplify as much as possible the scoring system to, be, to make it much more uh, understandable and easier to grasp. 
And it was very important because it really increased the pace of the game and make it even more uh, entertaining for, for the players. Also, the, the, the levels are really gradual. You start with the entry level players you start with are, uh, can be played something like 30 seconds. And it was very important because you, you really don't want to break any dynamics and you want to engage the players. So you start with very easy players and at the end you can reach much more complex uh, puzzles. But it was very important to make the game very lively and very fast from the beginning to uh, ensure that we engage as much player as possible. And the last lesson that we learned here is like, so games have many mechanisms to engage the player, that many loops and many systems to really uh, keep your attention. And you have to use them. Typically in a game like, like Borderlands, you have a lot of boosters and skins, and uh, we give that as a reward to the player. So that basically uh, engage them even further. Some go to play some, uh, to get some boosters, some, some skins, some just because they love science. But you have to keep in mind that the, the community of player is very diverse and there's a lot of mechanism to engage in and you have to use all of them. So now I will invite you to go to uh, Borderlands 3 if you wish and try to play it uh, through the cabinet. Thank you.